Welcome back tonight. We take a look at the events that are shaping the 2022 Kenyatta Succession Race with my guest, Honorable Gladys Wanga, who will be joining us very shortly. She's the chair of the National Assembly's Finance and Planning Committee and the former much acclaimed speaker of the National Assembly, Kenneth Marende, who's already with us. And welcome to you, sir, on the program. I want to start with Parliament's issues. And uh, beginning tomorrow, as far as the Ellis case is concerned, Parliament stands dissolved over failure to enact the gender rule. And uh, whilst you were Speaker, the courts had made a decision that the rule was not to be applied until 2013's uh, election. And at the time, I remember you saying that even in 2015, that would have been a date too far away. Now we are seven years on. This gender rule issue is still a problem. First, do you agree with LSK that beginning tomorrow, with or without the formal dissolution of Parliament, that the House would be sitting illegally? Um, first, thank you, Anne, for the invite to come to this uh, show. Um, my answer to that is that I don't agree with the L LSK to call for demonstrations at Parliament before the President makes that decision uh, to dissolve Parliament. And why is that? Well, um, first, uh, I will say this to you, uh, Anne, and the viewers, uh, that I myself am a member of the Law Society of Kenya, uh, and I have been in the practice of law for upwards 40 years. And so provisions of the law will normally give us guidance and a sense of direction as to where we should go. And as far as uh, I know, the provisions in the Constitution, and I think we are speaking about Article 261, are fairly comprehensive and, and, and clear, easy to understand. Uh, the relevant provision uh, in summary says that uh, if uh, Parliament does not uh, enact any piece of legislation, in time as anticipated by the Constitution, then the Chief Justice may advise the President to dissolve Parliament. And then it goes further and provides that the President, upon receipt of that advice from the Chief Justice, shall dissolve Parliament. Mm -hmm. And that then seems therefore to be mandatory. Right. But there is more to this. Uh, first, that we are uh, a democratic uh, country uh, that uh, conforms to the concept of the rule of law. And the rule of law, uh, among other things, provides uh, that where there are differences, then you may have to refer matters to the judiciary. In this case, there are cases which have been filed and are pending before court. So we cannot preempt what the judiciary will possibly decide and begin to demonstrate as if we want to force the hand of the president to perform an illegality. Because until that uh, litigation is uh, disposed of, mm. uh, they, there is no open uh, way to, to, to address this matter. And I hear you, Speaker, but I suppose what the LSK is also arguing is that the, the courts cannot rule against the Constitution and that the Constitution is clear what should happen in this case. So uh, let me just welcome uh, Honorable Gladys Wanga. Thanks for joining us and pose the same question to you. As you know, LSK has said beginning tomorrow, persons like yourself <laughs> are not wanted at Parliament buildings and that they will restrict you from entering, uh, entering Parliament on the grounds of the House being constituted improperly uh, in disregard of the not more than two-thirds general rule. But I, I suppose my question for you really is, is because you are uh, a leader in this house uh, with your chair position, and on top of that, you are also a woman legislator, and, and of course you have been at the forefront of advocating for this implementation of the not more than two-thirds general rule. What say you? I mean, are you with LSK on this one? Or do you stand with your colleagues? Will you dare go to parliament tomorrow? Tell me. Thank you, Anne, for, for having me. Um, 
Let me say that uh, I was uh, among the first leaders. I'm a big supporter of the 2000 gender rule. I was among the first leaders to, to support uh, uh, Chief Justice uh, David Maraga when he pronounced himself uh, on this matter of uh, parliament being dissolved for not meeting the two-thirds gender rule. We have worked uh, both in the 11th parliament and in the uh, 12th parliament to try and pass the two-thirds gender rule and have failed. Uh, so I'm, 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 I'm a big supporter of, of, of that cause of action, but we must do it within the law. And I want to agree with uh, Speaker Emeritus um, uh, Kenneth Marande that uh, LSK is the cast. You know, LSK is about the law, the law society of Kenya. And mm -hmm. therefore, they must be guided by the rule of law. And it is our hope that the LSK lives within the law and not outside of the law. And as... Um, Speaker has said, the president is not given a timeline within which um, to dissolve parliament. And therefore, the president will make several considerations uh, as he considers this very, very weighty matter, including public interest. Uh, secondly, the Parliamentary Service Commission, in which I served in the last uh, parliament, and which um, Speaker Marende chaired uh, when he was a speaker, has gone to the High Court and has gotten conservatory orders on this matter. And therefore, if the Law Society expects, and, and, and Javi, I just want to say, I think Javi is a bit overexcited. And, 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 and sometimes I think, because when you have senior ranking members of the Law Society of Kenya, you know, disagreeing with him on, on matters such as this, I think sometimes Javi is operating in his own space, operating the Law Society of Kenya from his own individual uh, whims and, and, and point of view. So I think Harvey should come down, uh, should you know, consult a lot more on, on heavy and serious matters such as this. And uh, you know, just uh, over being overexcited at the gates of parliament trying to stop people for cheap, as a cheap publicity stunt, I do not think helps our bigger cause, which we have fought for, um, you know, so much, which is the two-thirds gender rule. So, but what will help it, uh, and Speaker Emeritus, I want to come to you, because like I said, this is seven years plus in the making of a crisis. First, do you see this as a constitutional crisis uh, coming to the fore? And uh, what does it mean in terms of the risk of the legitimacy of parliament uh, going forward? And, uh, you know, just piggybacking off uh, what uh, Wanga has said, so what is the solution? Seven years on, what is the solution? Um... That is a good question, but my answer will be this, that uh, first we must respect the process of, uh, of law in the sense that before a decision is actually made on a matter which is pending before a, a court of law, that matter is sub judice. So I will offer comments, but I will only offer comments which are largely innocent. And as I said, uh, we don't have a constitutional crisis as yet. Because as you look at this matter, you must look at all relevant parameters, including uh, a, a basic principle of law that the law does not act in vain. That is uh, a leading maxim of mm. uh, equity. Mm. Because if, even as you think about possibility of dissolving parliament, you will have to look at what will then follow after dissolution of parliament. Mm -hmm. And as it is, there is a lacuna as to what will ensure that you in fact bring about uh, effect of the two-third uh, gender rule. In, in this sense, that there must be provisions enacted in law that will enable the electorate, when we go to elections, if we do, to elect uh, more women than we have in parliament. And there is no guarantee as things stand now because there are no enabling provisions in the law, uh, both in statute and even in regulations, that will guarantee that kind of outcome. Uh, it is this, possible yeah. that if we go to elections right. uh, on abrupt dissolution, mm. that in fact we may have a, a, a negative outcome, that less women than we have in the current parliament will be elected at an election 
which is not regulated right. to guarantee a particular outcome. And I hear you, but you're talking about the law not acting in vain. And very quickly, as we wind this up and, and, and move forward, I want to pose to both of you, do you think then the Chief Justice acted in vain? I mean, it has even been suggested on this program, for instance, by the, uh, I believe, majority leader in the National Assembly, that he had, a, there's a political reason behind his move, um, because he had knowledge of a bill that is at least before the Senate that is meant to do exactly what you're referring to, uh, Miranda. So d what do you think of the Chief Justice and, and his decision? And because he is, his tenure is coming to a close, what generally is your view of his performance? And let me begin with Speaker Emeritus on that one before I come to you, Wanga. The Chief Justice has uh, done his work as best as he can. But I think he has had a few problems. And I want to agree with the recent article that was in the press. I think it was the Sunday Nation on Sunday the 4th by uh, Professor Mutua. Professor Mutua uh, concludes, and I sympathize with that conclusion, that the Chief Justice is a good lawyer, but is uh, not a good politician. And yet the office which he holds uh, compels him to play both a, a lawyer's role and a political role as the head of the judiciary in our governance system. It is the third arm of government. Mm. And so law does not act in a vacuum. Mm. The Chief Justice ought to have borne in mind other considerations that are relevant to the situation that he gave the advice to. All right, Honorable Wanga. I think on this matter of the two-thirds general rule, the Chief Justice acted in good faith and, you know, to the best of his ability, what he could do, because Parliament has been given many, many opportunities um, to meet the two-thirds gender principle. And um, because, I mean, we have failed to do it, uh, not because we couldn't, but just because of... Uh, you know, members not agreeing on, 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 on this matter. But uh, what I must also note, Anne, is uh, the action of the Chief Justice has now been hijacked, you know, by, by, by people who want to uh, meet certain political ends. And, and this is what we must guard against. I mean, for us who have supported the, the, the two-thirds gender rule and many, uh, you know, leaders in this country and many uh, women leaders, but also, um, you know, uh, senior leaders who have supported the two-thirds gender principle, um, we, we, we want this to be achieved, but we are, we, I mean, it is unfortunate that the action by the Chief Justice has now been hijacked by people such as, uh, you know, uh, some politicians from a, a certain section, but also... Which ones? Honorable Wanga, Let me say Tangatanga, on, Tangatanga politicians, <laughs> including their agent Nelson Harvey, oh to meet goodness. certain uh, political ends. And, that, and that, you wanted me to say it, and I said it. I, like I mean, I was trying to be, be a bit, you know, but so that is the case. So we find ourselves in a quagmire where an issue that is supposed to be addressed is now in the middle of a serious political um you know, uh, quagmire, and, and that is where, as, as, as women leaders now, we, 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 we now, you know, we want the two-thirds gender principle, but we see the hijacking has come in, and so we must have a conversation as to how to get to the end. And the big thing about this decision that I really like is the two-thirds gender debate, and mm. we were having it as a woman's issue, as a mm. women's mm. issue. Whenever it came to parliament, you women are not, you know, are not here. You women are not doing this. But now, the good thing about Maraga's decision is this is now a debate for everybody. You know, every member of parliament's lifeline is now on this two-thirds gender matter. All and the more reason is, you should go home. Everybody is having this debate. Honorable <laughs> Long, all the more reason they should go home. Say that again? All the more reason parliamentarians should go home and think about it in Nyumbani. We are not even afraid of going home. If this is oh, going to enable now. us get the <laughs> two-thirds gender rule, I am no, I am I'm ready to go home. Lead if, from the front. If Lead from the front, they'll say. We have to go all of us. We can't go <laughs> partially. And, and you know when they say if you want to go home, resign. I say right. we are, if we are going, we have to go all of us. We cannot go partially. If we go partially, we'll have lost all the women and the men will remain on their own oh and my. have a party. Oh my. My goodness. Okay, I think it's time for us to take a break. Is it time for us to take a break? Let's go to break. We're back uh, with my guests talking a lot more about the issues, the politics that is shaping the 2022 Kenyatta succession race. Here on Punchline, we're back after this.